And we have another recap here at the Chess Club and Classic Center of St. Louis. I'm joined by Doug Eckert, who is going to take us through one of his games. So we're going to go ahead and jump back to the board. Bench. I'm having a pretty tough tournament here. Um, but in this particular position, I'm threatening queen takes pawn. And I'm also threatening that if he comes up and guards it, um, I, I can play queen check. He can't play knight here because a queen takes knight check, king takes a knight check. And if he moves the king, you know, away um, someplace like there, now I can play queen down here and attack the knight and I have some threats. So what he did was he played queen here to keep my queen off these squares, allowing queen takes h6. He plays b4. I have to play knight here. Queen takes pawn. And we were both in some time pressure here, and uh, a couple of the variations to look at. One is to play rook here with the idea of rook here. And black plays rook check, king here, rook or um, queen f8. And now, after I trade queens and say I take this pawn here, um, he can play um, knight here, rook takes pawn, pawn here. And all of a sudden, this is a potential mate threat there, so it's not that easy. And the other thing he can do is he can bring his rook up to this square, so after he takes the pawn, he can take there. And while you pawn up, maybe not so easy to win. So what I thought that I could do um, instead of all that was to um, bring this back. I didn't want to allow his rook to get down there. So after he played queen takes pawn, I brought my knight back here. And so now the concept is, is if he guards his knight with either rook square, now I have rook up and rook over mating on h8. So what he did was he sacrificed his queen. And this probably should not work um, in this position. Um, queen e3 and, and white's probably a little bit better, although it's not easy. I played this move and the position should be a draw after this. So he plays here, takes, takes, queen here, knight here. And, and unfortunately, white can't take the pawn here because after queen takes, he has knight check, king here, knight check, king here. Rook check, king here, and knight check, forking the king and queen. So what I have to do instead is play f3 in this position to keep his um, knight out of the square. And now he plays knight check. And, and I'm sorry, what I did, I threw queen check in first. He has to play king here. He couldn't play king g7 because a queen takes c3 and the knight's pinned. And now I played f3 and he plays knight here. And now, if he brings his king back here, it's going to be very hard to stop this pawn. So I, I set up basically a perpetual check here um, with f4. And now c2 is just a, a clear draw. Queen check, king here, queen check, and he can't go up because of queen check, king here, and queen here is mate. Um, yeah, <laughs> amazingly enough, um, he, he played knight to e3 here instead of c3, and we're on the increment. I agreed to a draw, but actually I can win with queen check and taking the knight. But, you know, that's what happens when you're having a not-so-good tournament. But it was an interesting game and an interesting finish. Okay. All right, thank you, Doug, for sharing that game. I know it's been a, a pretty tough tournament for a lot of people, but thanks for showing us. It was a very interesting and uh, complicated game. And we wish you the best of luck in all the future rounds. Thank you.